done an introduction to rational expressions, what they were, uh, that kind of thing. Today, we're going to go over multiplication and division of rational expressions, uh, as well as addition and subtraction, and LCDs. So first, we're going to go over just plain multiplication. Uh, remember, remember from previous chapters, when we want to multiply two fractions, we just multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Um, with rational expressions, it's the same thing. We don't change the rule at all. And so here's an example. If we wanted to multiply 4 sevenths and 3 tenths together, we would just multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom to get 12 over 70. And I think we could probably simplify that one if we wanted to. So the same holds for rational expressions. As you can see, I have x over 3 here x minus 1 over x plus 5 here. To multiply those two together, we just multiply straight across like that. All right, so here is an example. Once again, it's multiplication, so we just go straight across. So I have 7 times 6 um, times x to the fifth over 3 times 2 times x. We're going to notice real quick that 3 times 2 is equal to 6, so those two are going to cancel. We can also cancel 1x from the bottom, which leaves us 4 on the top, and we get 7x to the fourth as a result. <clears throat> so just to start a fraction, don't we end up with fractions? That right, yeah, it's sometimes these simplify into non-fractions, without a doubt. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Yeah, this guy here. Um, so, right, we just consider this as over 1 as a fraction. So we multiply straight across the top. So this is just equal to x squared minus 3x minus 10 times x plus 4 over x squared minus 10x plus 25. And now, of course, because we're never done until we simplify, we're going to have to factor out both of these polynomials to make sure that nothing cancels. So it looks like the upper polynomial, let's see now, we have a final term of negative 10, so this is a plus and a minus. We have a middle term of 3, which means the uh, larger factor goes on the negative. Uh, so two factors of 10 that differ by 3 are, of course, 5 and 2. Right, the only options. Um, the 5 goes with the negative because it's the larger, and that's going to give us the negative 3 in the middle as we wanted. And then the 2 just goes in the other one. The x plus 4 still just hangs out. Then I got to factor the lower guy. So I'm going to factor this. Um, I don't know if you guys recognize this, but this is a perfect square trinomial, one of the most common ones, right? Because 5 times 5 equals 25, and negative 5 plus negative 5 equals negative 10. So we can actually, this is equal to x minus 5 and x minus 5. We can cancel two factors. And we just write what's left, x plus 2 times x plus 4 over x minus 5. We don't have any more like factors, so that's our final answer. Ah, there's this guy. There's a lot of factoring to be done here. Um, <clears throat> hmm. So, I guess maybe I'll just write it all out first. So I multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, so I have 10x plus 20 times x squared minus 1. And on the bottom I have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Yeah, 5x plus 10. So now, before I start canceling things, I want to make sure everything's fully factored here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tackle this guy right here. It looks like I can pull a 10 out of that, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I have 10 on the outside, and what remains is x plus 2. As far as this guy, this is a classic difference of squares, right? x squared minus 1 squared. So that gives us x plus 1 
x minus 1, exactly. Now, on the bottom, let's go ahead and do some scratch work for this one on the side. And actually, when I look at this, there's no scratch work to be done, really. Um, I mean, you can figure this one out in your head, probably, by just one guess and check. <laughs> right? The first number is prime 2, so it's, it, it's got to be 2x in one binomial and a single x in the other one. The final number is 1. Right? We can only make that with two negatives or two positives. The middle number is a negative, so they've got to be two negatives. Minus one, minus one. Did that kind of make sense why that was such an obvious, not obvious, but it was kind of like I didn't really have to do any work on that. There were, there were so few options for that polynomial, it was like your first choice just gets it. <laughs> Okay, so moving on, um, I'm going to also factor what looks like a 5 out of this last polynomial, and then I'll call it a day probably, or I'll simplify, then call it a day. So I'm going to write the 5 way out here, and then I'm going to go ahead and write what's left. I have x plus 2. Okay, next thing, I'm going to go ahead and simplify as I go along. So 10 over 5, that's equal to 2. And I think I have some like factors. I have x minus 1 here, and I have x plus 2 here. And it looks like there's nothing else to cancel out. So I have 2 times x plus 1. 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1 on the bottom. Exactly. Okay. So that's it. Any questions about that one? Or those ones? Okay. All right. Now we move on to division. Now if you'll recall... Uh, division with fractions basically says you take the denominator, you flip it, and then you multiply. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> so if we're asked to divide these two polynomials, or these two rational expressions, um, all we do is we flip the second one and multiply. So we have x over 5 times y over 7. Straight across the top and straight across the bottom, xy over 35, exactly. And that's it. All right, once again, this guy here, this first uh, polynomial is, of course, over 1. So we have x plus 2 over 1 times, I flip this second one, x plus 3 over x minus 1. And that gives me x plus 2 times x plus 3 over x minus 1. There's nothing to cancel here, so it just stays. Alrighty, let's try another one. So, once again, I'm just going to flip this second fraction. So, um, hmm. yeah. So, I have x squared minus 2x minus 3, x squared minus 4, and that's multiplied by the flipped fraction, x plus 5, over x plus 1. <clears throat> okay, so now that we are going to do some multiplication, I want to go ahead and, or sorry, some canceling. I'm going to go ahead and factor out these things that need to be factored so I can see if I have any like factors to cancel. So this guy, uh, x squared minus 2x minus 3, does anybody know what that factors into? Anybody got their factor glasses on? <laughs> Hmm, so there's negative 3, negative 3 and a positive 1, good, negative 3, positive 1, exactly. What about this guy, x squared minus 4, what does that conform to? You got it. Keep yeah, there you go. x plus 2, x minus 2. Classic difference of squares. x plus 2, x minus 2. And then we still have the x plus 1 that came over from the other fraction. All right, so we're going to cancel our x plus 1s. It looks like that's it. Bummer. 
So I like it when it all cancels. That makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, yeah. You just drop the pen and walk away. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That would be our final answer. <clears throat> okay. Here is another one. So remember, this polynomial is over 1. So when we flip it, it's going to be 1 over all that stuff. So this is equal to z squared minus 2z plus 1. At the bottom, we have z squared minus 1. And then, of course, we have 1 over 4z squared minus z minus 3. <clears throat> Okay, so um, on this next step, I'm going to go ahead and factor stuff right off the bat. What does this top polynomial factor into? Exactly. That's a perfect square trinomial right there. So that is z minus 1 and z minus 1. I could write it in squared form right there, but I kind of like to have them separated so I can cancel them. It's funner that way. Sorry, funner is not a word. Okay. <laughs> Kate gets mad at me when I say that. <laughs> Funner's not a word. <laughs> yeah, it is, right? Okay, so z squared minus 1. Another example of difference of squares. So z plus 1, z minus 1. Now we got to figure out what this, this guy over here factors into. So I'm going to go ahead and go down below and do a little bit of scratch work and try and factor that out because that's one of those ugly examples. So I have 4z squared minus z minus 3. When I have the coefficient out front, the easiest thing to do is multiply the first and the last terms together, which would give me negative 12. And I, I look for factors in negative 12 that will add to the coefficient of my middle term. And so I want sums, or differences in this case, I want negative 1. Right, 12, I mean, you don't have to think about it for too long to figure out, well, 6 and 2 is not going to work, but 3 and 4 differ by 1. Okay, we want negative 1, which means the negative sign goes on the 4. Because that's the only way that we're going to get that, whoops, that's, that's not a 3. <laughs> that's the only way we're going to get that negative 1. <clears throat> so here is sort of the, the key to this, right? This is the part that we forget a lot. And this is the part where we split up that middle term, 4z squared. The negative z splits up into negative 4z and a positive 3z minus 3. And then we factor by grouping. So in this first little grouping, it looks like I can pull out a 4z. That leaves me with z minus 1. And in this second grouping, it looks like I can pull out a 3. So that leaves me with a z minus 1. Since my factors match, I'm on the right path and I can continue. So I go ahead and pull that z minus 1 out front. And then I write what's left, 4z. 4z plus 3. Boom. Okay, let's go back up <laughs> to the problem, right? This is, this is how it works. z minus 1 and 4z plus 3. All right, so now we have this in all its ugly glory. z minus 1, that's going to cancel. Another z minus 1, that's going to cancel. That was semi-satisfying. I'll call that a win. We canceled two factors on the top and the bottom. z plus 1 is left, and 4z plus 3 is left. And so that's it. All right. So, yep, that was ugly. Um, but, you know, take a little lesson from me there that I don't usually do, which was I went and said, I'm going to do this on scratch somewhere else. So it doesn't cloud your, your current problem, right? Like this is huge. And on tests, I had to do this because my, my work is so sloppy. And I rarely do this in class, but I should do it more. Is say like, oh, I'm going to go to my scratch paper. And I'm going to work out a bunch of stuff that's going to look messy. And then I come back to my regular problem, and it still looks nice. <laughs> OK. So that was the section on multiplication and division. As you can see, it's pretty easy, right? Like the hardest part about that is knowing how to factor them out and then canceling. 
once again, factoring rears its ugly head, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I thought, I don't know, I thought we could use that today. <laughs> I just moved it to the different rules. So, okay. So now in this section, uh, we're going to learn the easy cases of addition and subtraction. And if you remember fractions, those are the cases when the denominators match. And then we're going to start learning how to do uh, LCDs, least common denominators, uh, with rational expressions. Okay, next chapter, we're going to actually do addition and subtraction, and it's going to be full, full ugliness. But this chapter, we just sort of ease into it. <clears throat> okay, so um, once again, this is the rule. You can see these denominators match. It, it combines, and it creates a single denominator where you add the numerators. Okay, so for this particular example, I see that my denominators match, so that just carries right over, and then I have 4 plus 3 plus a up top, which gives me 7 plus a over a. <clears throat> now, sometimes during tests, people are super, super tempted to do this. Don't do that. That's, that can't <laughs> happen, right? Because there's a plus sign in the middle of these, you can't do that. If this was 7 times a, you'd be good. But I know it's super tempting to try that. <laughs> Don't do that. It's no good. Okay. Moving on. So we have matching denominators again, which means this is sort of an easy problem. Um, and so now we just add everything that's on the top. So I have 2x squared plus a single x squared. That gives me 3x squared. I have 3x plus x. That gives me 4x. I have negative 7 minus 8. That gives me minus 15. And that goes all over that single denominator right there. So, yes, we will factor this out, but no, it's not going to cancel. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, if you see this 3 out here as a coefficient, you know that means that our factors have to be 3x in the first term of one and 1x in the first term of the other. There's no other combinations to make three because it's prime. This one below starts with a 2x. They're not going to cancel, right? We're going to do it anyway just because we, we need practice on factoring is why. So I'm going to, maybe I'll cruise on down to the bottom. Oh no, I can go to the side. Look at that. <laughs> Little scratch work on the side. Scratch, exclamation. <laughs> All right, so we want to figure out how to factor this guy. So I take the first and the last term and I multiply them together. That gives me a negative 45. And I notice the middle term is a 4. I don't even know why I make these tables anymore because I never fill them out. <laughs> so, so remember, yeah, I think it helps maybe, yeah. Um, so remember, this is a negative 45, which means one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So that means we want two factors of 45 that differ by 4. 45 and 1, that doesn't work. What else? What might work? Two factors of 45 that differ by 4. So 3 times 15 is 45, right? What do those differ by, though? 12. So that's not quite it. What's 45 divided by 5? 9. Nine. Those differ by 4, right? Cha-ching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? We want a positive 4, so the larger factor is going to be positive. So positive 9, negative 5 will be what we split it up to. Yeah, just slowly, right? We've got to do a lot of repetition on this, right? Yeah, when you add those together, you do get 4. So yeah, those are the factors we want. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit further down here, and I'm going to split this guy up and then group it. 
Okay, so we know what our middle term needs to split into, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Plus 9x minus 5x minus 15. We group the first two, and it looks like we can take out a 3x. Good. 3x, which leaves us with x plus 3. And in the next one, I'm going to notice real quick, these are both negative signs. This is not a negative sign, which means I want to change those. So I'm going to factor out a negative something. Negative 5. Perfecto. Right? When we factor out the negative 5, we get x plus 3 now. These two factors match, which means I'm good and I can keep going. So I have x plus 3, and then what's left, which is 3x minus 5. Okay, so there it is. And x plus 3, 3x minus 5, x plus 3, 3x minus 5. This is super unsatisfying because nothing cancels. Hey, right? that's just, it's heartbreaking. Um, and honestly, like, you know, if, if you reach this point on a test and you realize it's never going to cancel, write a, write a quick argument. Just write a quick argument and be like, you can't because that's not the option. And I'll, I won't make you, I don't care if you don't factor it out as long as I know why. Right? If you just leave it like this, eh, sorry, dude, you should have tried to cancel something. Yeah. I want to see those factors at the end and I want to see that. Unless you notice, you know, you can just circle that three and say you can't make a two out of... Three. three. There's no two in the factors of three, so I'll, so I rest. I rest my case and I stop this problem. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so let's keep going a little bit here. So um, once again, these are all easy cases, so our denominators are matching. We just add straight across with this example. So I have x minus 5 plus 2 over x squared minus 9. This is equal to um, x minus 3 over this guy factors, right? Yeah. What does it factor into? x minus 3 and x plus 3. Exactly. And that's it. Things cancel, and I get 1 over x plus 3 in the end. Okay, let's go to subtraction. Here we go, it's the same rule, right? There's just a subtraction sign in the middle. Um, <clears throat> the only thing to, to keep in mind with this one, like one of the most common mistakes is to not put parentheses around what you're subtracting, right? And so for this one, first of all, I notice these are the same, so I'm allowed to just subtract straight across. And this is equal to 3x minus, in parentheses, x minus 5. If you leave out those parentheses, you will be wrong. That yeah, well, because if you leave out those parentheses, then you end up with 3x minus x minus 5. But that's not what it's supposed to be in the end. Because when you apply the negative, it should be 3x minus x plus 5. Yeah, and so that last term gets screwed up. Okay, so when we do this, we have 3x minus x. That gives us a 2x plus 5 over x plus 2. Wah, wah, we can't cancel anything. <laughs> okay, so here we go again. Another fun one. We have matching denominators. So we subtract straight across the top. I have x squared minus, in parentheses, x plus 12 over x minus 4. So that, when I distribute that negative, gives me x squared minus x minus 12, all over x minus 4. Can anybody tell me what the top polynomial factors into? Right? There you go. And which goes where? Whoops, that should be a negative. The positive is the 3. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, and that's because that middle term was a negative, right? And so the smaller factor would go with the positive. Okay, so these guys will cancel, and our end result is just x plus 3. <clears throat> 
So keep in mind as we're doing all these, um, you know, they don't really, they're not sticklers about it at this point, but later on they're going to be more insistent that you start restricting your values. And so, you know, as we go through these, just remember like, oh yeah, for this problem, x could never equal positive 4. We'd restrict those values. So just keep that in mind as we go through. All right. Now, for the fun stuff, everybody's favorite lesson, least common multiples and least common denominators. <clears throat> so this is a, like the, the process for finding the least common multiples and least common denominators. It's, it's the exact same as with regular numbers. Um, <clears throat> so before, before we do anything else, let's just let's do a little bit of warm up for this section real quick. <laughs> and so let's just warm up by doing a couple of factor trees. Remember the factor trees to yeah. get to our prime factorizations. Do you have a question, Tessa? Uh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll do 36 and I'll have you guys do 40 just to, you know, mentally wind up your brains. So 36 splits up into 6 and 6. Exactly, yeah. And remember, unless it's prime, we just draw two branches from it and two factors that <laughs> two factors that equal that. <laughs> right? And once we have all prime factors, that's our prime factorization. You guys go ahead and try 40 on your own. Good. Keep that up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody's probably done with that by now. So remember, it doesn't really matter which factors you choose first. So your factor tree, the first level, might look different than mine. I'm just going to do 4 and 10. 4 splits up into 2 and 2, and 10 splits up into 2 and 5. So this is the prime factorization for 40. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've warmed up a little bit with that, let's get into all this stuff. Um, so suppose, let's just go over like the fraction method first. Suppose we wanted to add 1 sixth and 3 eighths. We first need to find a least common multiple of 6 and 8. This means it's the smallest number with both 6 and 8 as factors. That's what the least common multiple means. And when you find the least common multiple of two denominators, that becomes the least common denominator. <clears throat> so to find the least common multiple of 6 and 8, we just write them down. And then we'd write down their prime factorization. So 6 breaks up into 2 and 3. 8 breaks up into 2 times 2 times 2. Then we choose 1. I'm going to choose the 8. We write it out. And then we take any factors that this is missing that the other one has. So times 3. Yeah, exactly. 3 is the only one. So we multiply the whole thing by 3. This is equal to 24. And 24 is our least common multiple of 8 and 6. It's not too bad, yeah. It's another one of those things that repetition helps. It's a little bit weird at first. <clears throat> okay, so if we wanted to add these, we know that our LCD is 24. And so all we need to do is we need to multiply this fraction by something that will turn the denominator into 24 a.k.a. whatever fractions it's missing, or whatever factors it's missing from this guy. And the same thing with this guy. We need to multiply top and bottom of that fraction by whatever it takes to turn an 8 into a 24. So 1 over 6, 6 times 4 is 24, so I multiply top and bottom by 4, exactly. 3 over 8, 8 times 3 is 24, so I multiply top and bottom by 3. This gives me 4 over 24 plus 9 over 24, which ends up as 13 over 24. <clears throat> All right, so that's how we used to do it, just plain old fractions. 
Now, we're going to start doing this when we have x's and y's included too. It's basically the same thing. Uh, you just have to consider x's and y's as other factors. That's it. So if they want us to find the LCD of these two fractions, first we write the denominators next to each other. So we have 36x squared and 24x. All right, the prime factorization of 36 is 2. Good, 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 good. And I'm just going to put x squared here because later on they start doing like 5x's and it's easier just to look at them and be like, yeah, I need to add one. <laughs> okay, so 24, that's 4 times 6, so that is 2. Good, times x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just, um, well, I don't know, I'm going to circle the top one. Not really. No, it, it doesn't. Um, I like to choose the larger one because that means I'm adding fewer factors to it. Uh, and sometimes one of them completely contains the other one. And if that's the case, you just choose that one because that's automatically your, your LCD. <laughs> um, so, okay. So I'm going to choose this one, 36x squared. Um, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times x squared. So it contains, it looks like it contains a 3 and an x. One more 2 and an x. Yeah, it contains two 2s, but we're missing this 2 that the 24 does contain. So we're going to multiply the whole thing by 2. That gives us 72x squared. <clears throat> so that's the LCD. So if we want to add these two fractions together, we have to convert them both so that both denominators are 72x squared. Yeah. Is that your notes? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, I I don't know, just then let's just go ahead and convert those real quick just to just to show you guys what it's all about. I thought the problem asked us to do that anyway. So, if we wanted to convert 5 over 36x squared, Right, that was just missing that one factor of 2. Mm -hmm. So I multiply top and bottom by 2. Oops. That gives me 10 over 72x squared. Uh, as far as the other one, 7 over 24x, that was missing. Uh, that is missing 3, ah, 3x, three right? Yeah, so I multiply top and bottom by 3x, and then I get 21x over 72x squared. And remember, when you're doing this, don't cancel at this point, because then you're just working against yourself, right? Do your whole addition and subtraction, and then start canceling at the end. Okay, onward. All right, so let's find the LCM for um, all the polynomials they give us here. So we have 15a and 35b. So I go ahead and write them down. 15a is 5 times 3 times a. 35b is 5 oh, times seven. 7, good, times b. Okay, uh, I don't know. I'm going to circle the top one and write it down. And it looks like from the bottom... Good. Yeah, we're missing those two factors from the bottom, so we're just going to throw them at the end here. Times 7 times b. What does that equal? I don't know. 105. We'll just say yes, 105. <laughs> Nobody punched that into their calculator. Okay, so, ah, these guys always, <laughs> good. We'll just say 105. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that. Make it sound like a guess even. 105? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 21x cubed y to the 6th and 7x to the 5th y to the 2nd. So the 21 breaks up into 7 times 3. We have x cubed y to the 6th and the 7 down here is prime x to the 5th hmm, y to the 2nd. Yeah. So, I'm going to circle this one because it looks like it contains more factors. 7 times 3 times x cubed y to the 6th. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm only missing two factors of x because this one has three. This has two more than that. So all I need to do is bump the number of x's up by two. Five. Make this a five now. Yeah, right? Um, I have six y's already. I only needed two from this bottom, so I don't need to change anything. Right? All I need to do is adjust the x's. So the LCM to these is 21 x to the fifth y to the sixth. <clears throat> All right. There we go. This is what we're going to get more into is LCMs of full polynomials. So when we, <laughs> I heard that. Uh. <laughs> All right. So five. I understand that. Uh, so <laughs> x squared plus five x minus six. Um, before we yell it out, everybody take a minute, try and factor this on your own paper. A little bit of practice. Everybody got it? Or anybody got it? Tessa? There we go. Negative 1, x plus 6. Good. Yeah, and the plus has to go on the 6 because the middle term was a positive. Yes. <laughs> All right, so what about this one? This one's easy, right? We know this. A squared minus B squared. This is a difference of squares, right? So this is X plus 1, X minus 1, yeah. All right, so it's the same, it's the same concept that we just did, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just use this factorization. X minus 1 times X plus 6. And I'm going to see if it's missing anything from down here. So the x plus, plus one. yeah, x plus 1 is what we're missing. We have the x minus 1, but we're missing the x plus 1. So I just add it in. And there we go. After you factor, these ones are actually easier. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right. So sometimes we have to do this with more than one denominator. So. It's, it's basically the same concept, right? You just have to check all denominators to see if the factors are included. Hey, and sometimes your numbers get really large with this. So we have 12x, 16y, and 8xyz. So 12x breaks up into 2. Two times three. Good, good. What does 16 break up into? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Good. And of course, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. X, Y, Z. <clears throat> All righty. Um, I'm going to circle the middle one just for fun. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So y. Good, right? Yeah, there's four twos in this. Right, if we analyze the other one, the other factors, they contain fewer twos than four, right? <laughs> yeah, than the middle one. So we don't need to add any, any more of those. So just like Deja said, the only one that's not in there is this three and a couple of the variables. So we say multiply by three, and we're also missing the z and the x. X, z. That's it. There is your common multiple. And that is 16 times 3. I don't know. It's something. <clears throat> so this guy, it's 48. <laughs> All right. So these guys here. Aha. So once again, we just go for it. Can this be factored? Right here. Yes. 
Hmm. But if we did that, so this is what we're looking at here. We have x squared plus 0x plus 4. So if this were factorable, we would split up like this. And you would need, this is a positive 4, so these would be either both positive or both negative. But this doesn't even have a sign. So you'd need two factors of 4 that were the same sign that added to 0. Impossible, right? So it's prime. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just kind of trying to lead you guys through the logic of like seeing when some of these are prime. Like when you're like, I, it's just not possible. Prime. And in fact, uh, you know, we're really used to factoring things like this, x squared minus 4. Whenever there's a plus sign here instead of a minus, you can't factor it. That's, that's a rule, kind of. You know, it's just... Yeah, because to get rid of this middle term, you need conflicting values, right? And if and it's a plus, not. then they're the same value, and it can't be done. <clears throat> all right, so there's a nice little detraction. So these are all prime. When everything's prime, you just multiply it all together. This is the easy example. There we go. There's our LCM. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So in this example, they actually want us to find the equivalent expressions that have the LCD for these two, um, for these two rationals. Uh, but we already found the LCD for these, right, in another problem. So we know this is the LCD, and we just want to convert both of these so that they uh, are ready to add together if we want to. Um, really, we're, we're going to have to factor this anyway, just because we're going to have to see which uh, which factor it's missing. So on this first one, I have x plus 3, and that's over, looks like it will be, a hmm. positive and a minus. yeah, it looks like a plus 6 and a minus 1, yeah. Okay, so to convert this one, I got to multiply top and bottom by the factor it's missing. That would be the x plus 1. So I have x plus 3, x plus 1, and then x plus 6, x minus 1, and x plus 1. And so that's it. So that, that's how you would convert that particular one. And let's do the other one. That is x plus 7 over x squared minus 1. What does x squared minus 1 turn into? What does that factor into? Plus. Difference of squares. Plus one minus one. Yeah. X plus one, X minus one. All right, and so the factor that this is missing from our LCD is the X plus six. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by that. I get x plus 7 times x plus 6 over x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 6. <clears throat> and that's it. And then, if you were adding these two, they'd be ready to add because they have like denominators. <clears throat> All right, so that's it for today's class. That was a quick one. Um, just